do a capitalism survival guide next. Please make a monkey's declassified capitalism survival guide. Talk about the flaws of capitalism next. You need to do capitalism next. Balance things out. Do capitalism. Jesus Christ, okay. You commies really do care about equal distribution, don't ya? In a world full of affordable health care, insane livable wages, and economies where 1% of citizens don't own 40% of the wealth, Monkey Jones, that's me, and my two best friends try to do the impossible, create a guide to help you survive capitalism. Coming up, looking out, I'll survive no doubt, never fear. Monkey's Declassified Capitalism Survival Guide. Your results may vary. Capitalism is the lie that rich people tell poor people to keep them docile. This lie rests on the foundation of the popular fallacy, anyone can be rich if they work hard enough. When they say anyone, what they really mean is the vast minority of people, as 65% of Americans born into poverty will die in poverty, and only 8% of them will end up making six figures. So chances are, if you're born into poverty, then no matter how hard you work, you're gonna die there. But don't worry though, that's why I'm here, to teach you the tips and tricks that will help you survive capitalism. Chapter 1. Gambling. If you're born into poverty, one of the only ways you can become rich is by gambling. You might think that the best way to gamble your way into a higher social class would be by winning the lottery. But as it turns out, you only have a 1 in 175 million chance of hitting it big. That's why I recommend gambling in a high stakes game that has a slightly higher chance of success going to college. Now college is a big gamble. The average college graduate owes $37,000 in student loan debt. And there's no guarantee they'll find a job that reflects their level of education or even a job at all. In fact, 51% of college graduates end up in a job that doesn't even require their college degree. Plus, it takes the average college graduate 21 years to pay off their student debt. Wow, 21 years of debt just to be an assistant manager at Starbucks? What a waste of time and money! That's what you get for majoring in African chimpanzee studies, you stupid ape. At least I didn't suck my professor's cock just to get a B minus, you disgusting fucking whore! If you graduate from college but can't find a job to help you pay off your tremendous debt, then there's one quick and easy way to get out of it. Kill yourself. Those debt collectors can come knocking on your casket all they want, but why should you care? That's your family's problem now. And now you're probably thinking, Wow, all of that debt sure does sound risky. Maybe I'm better off not going to college. Well, think again, retard! If you don't go to college, then you're pretty much fucked for life. The value of a high school diploma has been on the decline for the last 40 years, and the average high school graduate earns almost half as much as those with a college degree. Wait, so if I don't go to college, then I'm fucked. And if I do go to college, then I'll have a massive financial burden, and there's a good chance I'll end up being fucked anyway? That's right, Junkie. Wow, that's, uh... Huh. Well, uh... I wanna fuck Jane Goodall, I guess. Chapter 2! How to stay alive without a livable wage! So yeah, if you're born into poverty, then chances are you're gonna stay there. Luckily, I've got a bunch of tips and tricks to make a livable budget out of an unlivable income. Let's do a little bit of monkey math! 
Realistically, your dumbass won't be able to get a decent low-skilled job because they all require 10 years of experience. So you'll be stuck working for minimum wage. The legal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25 per hour in most areas. So let's take that $7.25 times 40 hours a week minus about 30% for taxes, multiplied by 4, and that leaves you with about $812 per month. If you're lucky, you'll find an apartment to rent for around 500 bucks per month, depending on where you live. Then you've got to pay for your car loan, gasoline, insurance, utilities, student loan, and Monkey Jones's Patreon. And that'll leave you with about negative $180 left for food. Meanwhile, Richie Big Bucks will be raking in seven figures a month while sitting on his ass just because he was born into a wealthy family. But remember, capitalism is all about hard work. And clearly, Richie Big Bucks is working harder than you since he has more money. So maybe next time you're starving to death after clocking out from an eight-hour shift at the factory, you should consider working harder. Now you're probably thinking, But Mumkey, I need food to live. How am I supposed to survive on a food budget of negative $180? Well, don't worry. I'm a master of eating for free. Just follow these tips and tricks and you'll be eating like a true capitalist. The dark secret that the restaurant industry doesn't want you to know is that they've got a lot of free shit in there. Just past the counter where you're supposed to order food, they've got all sorts of free condiments, seasonings, napkins, you name it. So to eat for free, you've just gotta go to as many fast food restaurants as possible and take handfuls of the free shit. It's perfectly legal. However, you probably don't want anybody to notice what you're doing because that would be extremely embarrassing. So you should try to dress as inconspicuously as possible. In hindsight, it was probably a mistake for me to wear my Kakashi jacket. Yep, that's right. You watch. I won't be able to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe. Did you ever finish it? It's like 10 years long. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Naruto died? Naruto died? No, yes. I didn't know that. And but Naruto, I... it shows that Naruto is dead. Well, and um, Baruto, Naruto's son, who surpasses Naruto, um, he was drawing a book and he was like looking up and Yuna saw, but he was looking, she was looking at him and he was like, she was like modeling and all that. And it looks onto the picture what he was drawing. There was a trash can right next to her. <laughs> he was drawing. <laughs> so she's doing all this modeling and stuff, and he's just drawing this trash can. Yeah, it's funny. Well, yeah, I'll talk to you later. See you. How you doing? Here's another tip. In case you're worried that you might not like something, feel free to ask the restaurant employees what they think about it. Excuse me, have you had the scorpion pepper? Um, no, I haven't, but supposedly that's the one that's the hottest out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hot? I'm trying to see like what it has in it. I just wondered, well, because I don't know if I can handle it. I was going to see if it was really that spicy. Just try a little bit. Okay. I washed one of the containers. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty spicy. <laughs> that's pretty good. Thank you. Once you've collected enough free ingredients, head on back home because it's time to get cooking. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Monkey Jones capitalist kitchen. Today we're going to make a special capitalist meal out of all the free ingredients that we got from local fast food restaurants. We've got a wide assortment of ketchups, mustard, a Bojangles sweetener, Bojangles sweetener, strawberry jam from, um, where did I get that from? Chick-fil-A! They have strawberry jam at Chick-fil-A. Real mayonnaise from a variety of places. Hot sauces. Got some Five Guys nuts. I got Five Guys nuts in a bag. <laughs> Eleven. Some super spicy sauce according to the two Mexicans at that place. And whatever this green shit is. We're gonna pour it all into this pan. Gonna make up a capitalist stew. 
A delicious capitalist stew. It's gonna be great. Once you got all your broth in the pot, you're gonna wanna mix that up. Now come on in here and get a good shot of this mix. It's gonna look delicious, folks. You're gonna see um, a creamy vomit color form in the pot, and it just, it's gonna get your appetite so ready to enjoy this delicious stew. Now that looks pretty stewy. So get up here, you wanna get it all the way up to high, and you're gonna wait for that shit to boil. And that's when you'll add all your chunks. And those are gonna be some good chunks. Oh god! <laughs> Once you got a good boil going, you wanna... Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, you wanna get your chunks in there without getting burned. There we go. That's some good chunky stuff. But go ahead and mix all that in with your boiling broth. We're well on our way to making the most delicious capitalist stew I've ever seen. And when you think it's been cooking long enough, you can take it off the heat and serve it to a loved one, but more likely to yourself. I mean, Musty, you probably don't have too many loved ones, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh boy. Bon appetit! I can't wait to eat! Oh boy, I can't wait to enjoy this capitalist meal! Let's, let's get a completely free, completely free meal. Let's get a big old bite. Let's, let's get a chunk in there. Got a big old peanut chunk. Here we go. My body says no. <laughs> I'm gonna vomit into the bowl. <laughs> Don't you go anywhere. I just gotta get this in my mouth. <clears throat> my body's rejecting it. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. You get what you pay for when it comes to the capitalist stew. There's vomit in there. I don't want to eat that anymore. That was a terrible idea. Chapter 3. Bitch and moan to make yourself feel better. Wow, monkey. Capitalism sure does sound unfair for those born into poverty. Can anything be done to fix it? I'm glad you asked. And the answer is... Probably not. The rich are going to continue getting richer. The poor are going to continue to get poorer. And the capitalistic lie of the American dream will continue fooling the vast majority of the population until the end of time. But there are a few things you can do to make yourself feel better. For example, you can march on Wall Street. The best way to prove that you deserve to make more money is by sitting on the sidewalk doing absolutely nothing. Wow, you sure did show the rich elite. They definitely read your cute protest sign from all the way up in their private jets. Or you could support a presidential candidate that promises to help tackle wealth inequality. You'll just have to hope that the rich elite don't pay for his opponent to win. Oops. And finally, here's my favorite tip of all. A tip that will probably appear in all of my survival guides because it's just that good. Don't think about it. Sure, 1% of people owning 40% of a nation's wealth is absurd. And sure, many companies pay their employees an unlivable wage while the corporate fat cats rake in all of the money. But if you don't think about it, it won't bother you. Just keep living paycheck to paycheck, barely able to make ends meet while working your ass off at a job you hate while continuously being told that you're only poor because you don't work hard enough. 
keep doing all of that, but also distract yourself by spending your free time watching YouTube videos and Netflix all day. If you just keep yourself constantly hypnotized by easily consumable media, then you won't even notice when the 1% ends up with 50% of the wealth, and then 60%, and then 70%. But who fucking cares? Because hey, season 2 of Stranger Things is up now. Hey everybody, if you love capitalism as much as I do, then you should consider throwing a buck or two into my Patreon account. It really helps the show, and it helps me stay alive, so I don't have to keep eating that fucking capitalist stew. Also, my old Twitter account got deleted, so you should come follow my new Twitter account. It's great, I post memes on there, and I get into Twitter fights with people like Psy and Rusty Cage. It's super fun. Go follow me on Twitter, folks. Hey, hey, LMAO. <laughs> yeah, capital. Hey, we're gonna do alcoholism next. I don't think you can request one like they did for this one. We're doing alcoholism, goddammit. 